The Max and Frieda Weinstein Archive of Evo Sound Recordings documents the entire history of the Ashkenazic Jewish world in sound, from the dawn of the recording industry around 1900 to the MP3s of today. The earliest sound carriers in the collection are piano rolls and shellac discs of various formats. This includes the short-lived quarter-inch thick diamond disc created by Thomas Edison, so named because of the diamond stylus used to play them. Early mass-produced 20th century commercial discs were recorded and played back by relatively primitive mechanical acoustic processes. One of two spring-powered gramophones in our collection gives an example of how these fragile records were enjoyed in the home. Later recording technology advanced to using electric microphones. Jewish American immigrants wanted music that reminded them of home, and the American recording industry capitalized on these buying interests. The 78, three-minute records which turned at 78 revolutions per minute became a mass market phenomenon. Our collection of 78s reflects the diversity of Jewish music of the era. Star cantors, Yiddish theater and concert personalities, comedy routines, and of course, Yiddish instrumental dance music, or klezmer. <laughs> Prominent artists whose work is documented in this format include the iconic klezmer clarinetist Naftuli Brandwine and Dave Terrace, singing stars Aaron Lebedev and Isa Kremer, cantorial legends Joseph Rosenblatt and Gershon Sirota, and Yiddish writer Shalom Aleichem in his rare commercially issued recording. It's no exaggeration to say that the klezmer revival of the 1970s and 80s was largely possible due to Yivo's 78 RPM disc collection, which has grown to encompass over 6,700 titles spanning the first half of the 20th century. Record labels began to issue cardboard albums of discs and sleeves dedicated to a single artist or theme. The term album is still used to refer to published musical collections of all kinds, even if that collection is virtual. 1948 saw the introduction by the American Columbia label of the Long Playing Disc, or LP, running at 33 and a third RPM. The microgrooves of a 12-inch LP could hold up to 22 minutes of material per side. Now pressed on much quieter vinyl, commercial LPs improved both the fidelity and the possible length of material offered. For example, it was now possible to issue a 20-minute recording of Isaac Bashevis Singer reading one of his stories in Yiddish. Record labels were quick to take advantage of the 12 by 12 inch LP record jacket to provide catchy cover artwork and on the back so-called liner notes with biographical and historical information, even an inner sleeve or booklet with song lyrics and photos. Until compact discs arrived in the 1980s, the LP, with the addition of stereo in the mid-1950s, was a standard commercial format for recorded sound worldwide. Yivo's LP collection contains an estimated 3,500 discs, including iconic collections by Theodore Bikel, the Berry Sisters, and the leading lights of the early klezmer resurgence, such as Kapelje, Andy Statman, the Klezmorim, and the Klezmer Conservatory Band. Virtually, the entire output of Jewish record companies such as Tikva, Collectors Guild, and the Greater Recording Company can be found here. Most of our commercial discs come from private donations. Once we receive such discs, they are cataloged, cleaned, and placed on the shelf. Yivo's Jewish radio collection, initially spearheaded by Yivo's first sound archivist, Henry Sapoznik, includes 16-inch transcription discs, which were the common sound carriers for the dissemination of programs for broadcast across the United States. Commonly pressed on vinyl as early as the 1930s, the records were also cut onto acetate-coated aluminum and, during the war years, glass. Later, radio programs were most commonly recorded for broadcast and or preserved on audio tape. Our radio holdings also include tapes of members of the National Yiddish Theater of Warsaw 
made for export. One of our collections consists of what are likely the only extant copies of programs broadcast over New York radio station WEVD, recorded off the air onto audio cassettes by an avid listener. These one-of-a-kind tapes are stored in handmade cardboard boxes accompanied by detailed logs of the contents. And the Litvak sang. The papers of innumerable Yiddish cultural personalities, organizations, and collecting projects which have been entrusted to Yivo's care feature sound elements. For example, the great Russian based Sidor Bolarsky's papers house virtually his entire recorded output, including the metal stampers for the many LPs produced by his daughter, Isabel. Such audio materials can also be found in the papers of Yiddish theater composer performer Herman Yablokov. Molly Pecan, the husband and wife team of Minna Byrne and Ben Bonus, and Nelly Kessman. With the post-war era of the late 1940s came the availability of home recording devices such as wire recorders, spontaneous disc cutters, and magnetic reel-to-reel -reel tape machines. This inspired the advent of the non-commercial documentation of everything from lectures, meetings, family gatherings, religious events and concerts to large-scale collections of various Ashkenazic musical genres. This kind of technology allowed a variety of Yiddish folk song collecting projects which are housed at YIVO. YIVO's various folklore club meetings of the 1940s were preserved on flexible green sound scriber discs. Amateur folklorist Ben Stonehill collected over 1,000 songs from Holocaust survivors arriving in New York City, recording them on wire recorder. Benedict Stambler, the founder of the Collectors Guild record label, taped the music of various Hasidic dynasties in Brooklyn on reel-to-reel -reel tape. YIVO also has the legendary folklorist Ruth Rubin's collection of some 3,000 Yiddish folk songs performed by traditional singers recorded primarily in New York and Montreal. This collection is now accessible digitally through the Ruth Rubin Legacy website. In the 1970s, YIVO created its own folk song project directed by Barbara Kirschenblatt Gimblet, which is currently being digitized. YIVO also has one-of-a-kind collections, including oral histories of the labor movement, Holocaust testimonies, and the recordings of Bina Silverman Weinreich's Yiddish dialect project. Audio cassettes also figure prominently in commercial recordings made in the 1970s to 90s, as well as tapes that preserved various YIVO lectures and events, such as a poetry reading by Avram Sutzkever and Allen Ginsberg. And finally, the Sound Archive began collecting compact discs in the 1980s and has continued in the digital domain with MP3s. In order to better serve the public, over the last 20 years we have also amassed an invaluable reference library. The Max and Frieda Weinstein Archive of Evo Sound Recordings continues as an invaluable resource for research into the sounds of Ashkenaz by scholars, musicians, playwrights and filmmakers, and anyone interested in the aural treasures to be found there. Preserving sound recordings and making them accessible allows us to not just know Jewish history, but to hear it for ourselves. Thank you.